What is up, guys? This is not a racing video, I'm sorry. But the past couple weekends, hell, pretty much the last four weeks in a row almost, I think, racing everywhere. We've been going all types of places, doing all types of things. It's been great. You guys have been eating those videos up. I love it. Um, a lot of new subscribers within the past, just, I mean, just the past two weeks, but even like over the past two months, things are looking really good. Subscriber count is over double than what it was last year, which is so awesome. But uh, with that being said, there's a lot of new people, so I kind of wanted to go over the car real quick and what some of the, the upcoming plans are. Um, got me a nice yingling here. You guys ever like hide things from yourself? So we can't get yingling out here, right? Because... I'm in New Mexico and they don't have it uh, west of the Mississippi. So every time, like one of my best friends here and another friend down the road, we're all from Pennsylvania. So every time we go, we try and bring back Yingling for whoever wants it. Cause it goes, like you can sell this stuff for expensive out here. Like a 12 pack, I can sell this for like 30 bucks. But I found that in the closet earlier. Made me so happy. Fourth of July weekend, I get to have a little taste of beer from home. It's the only dark beer that I drink. Anyway, um, let's roll to the car and Talk a little bit. All right, well here she is in all her glory. It is a 2016 Golf R with some minor weight reduction. This is a manual car. Boom, we have 77,000, Jesus. 77,000 on the clock. Got a 450 Walbro, uh, 925 cc injectors, port injection, no high pressure fuel pump, upgrade at least. All types of things, lightweight battery, Racing line intake, racing line all the way back down to the turbo. Racing line, we got the track slag, four inch downpipe, catless to a Remus exhaust. Got the PTP turbo blanket, EQT piping to the intercooler. Intercooler is also racing line. Get the racing line catch can, uh, Black Forest Industries mounts. One of the upgrades I'm doing very soon, which I think I might order like this weekend, I'm gonna go full stage two mounts. So I have the old style BFI mount it uses the, the basically it's the OEM motor mount with their um, polyurethane in it, and now they have a whole a billet piece like this for the trans. I believe it's a lot more sturdy, and that's stage two. So I'm gonna get the stage two updated billet, and then get the stage two motor. Um, I'll sell those to somebody for cheap. Hit me up on Instagram or in the comments. We'll make it make it work about half price. Um, yeah. Next up will be an intercooler as well. My car is dirty as hell from all the traveling I've been doing. Don't, don't mind that. But uh, I need a bigger intercooler. When I was 28 uh, PSI, it was fine. It held up good in the Texas heat for the most part. Um, but now at 32 pounds, it's, there's, it's starting to heat soak. It'll cry, climb 30, 40 degrees at the top of fourth with 32 pounds. So um, you have to switch that out. The AMS intercooler this is what I want. And apparently it's one of the lightest intercoolers too, so I might be able to shed a couple pounds, which would be great because I've taken so much weight out of the back. Since we don't have back seats, it's got the PM4 back here for the fuel um, pump, give it all of its potential. But here, actually I'll probably do that this weekend too. Get these seat belts out of here and these plastics and stuff. Like I don't need um, any of this, but the back end's pretty light. And uh, all the weight's on the front right now. It needs to be quarter balanced, but I still need to raise the car slightly because after adding caster, I don't know if you guys know what caster is, but it caster, say my hand is the center, like it moves the whole wheel forward some. And that helps with steering feel and it gives me more um, camber as you turn the wheel. So my wheel, just like this, is negative 3.1 degrees. That's how I daily the car. But once you turn the wheel, when you add caster, it also adds more camber. So I don't know what the measurement is at full lock, but uh, it's going to be more than negative 3.1. So the deeper I am into a, a turn, I'm getting potentially more grip up front. That way I can um, brake later, uh, exit quicker, all that jazz. But it's rubbing the shit out of my fender liners. You can't see because the sun's right there. But the last autocross event, I ripped out that whole side. like the, the whole fender liner is gone and messed up my fender, which brings me to another thing. And my hood's all messed up just from rock chips and 
everything, you know, it's got 77,000 miles. I take this car everywhere. As you guys can see in the videos, like these, these events I go to are not local at all. Everything's at least like an hour and a half drive. Every autocross I go to at least an hour and a half to get there, sometimes longer. And then half the time I'm spending the night in air. So I'm either crashing with a buddy or getting a hotel. It's a lot of money, a lot of time, but uh, it messed up my fender when this fender liner got pulled out. You can see the, the dent there. It's a nice, I, mean, I could probably pull it out and fix it, but we're looking to save weight here. And I don't really know how much carbon fiber fenders are gonna save over that, but it'll look dope. So I'm gonna get carbon fiber hood, fenders, probably wind up getting a new bumper because of how bad this bumper is eventually in time. But uh, the biggest purchase will be the carbon fiber hatch. And that will be super dope. I'm gonna go with like um, some Lexan or uh, fiberglass something some lightweight glass and rip out all the plastics. Uh, it'll still have the seals and I'll still have the, the wing and stuff. I don't have, I believe there's old winglets and I haven't ran a wiper in the back in many, many years. So I'm not worried about that. And I can toss the motor. I still have the motor in. So that'll save even more weight. Um, and after that, I need to get springs. I want the car to be a little bit stiffer. So I need to get springs after all the weight shed. And then like I said, raise the car ever so slightly and I can finally get this thing corner balanced. Like that's gonna be the most weight out of the car anytime soon, really. Um, unless I find a deal on a pair of seats, I'm also looking to get seats. I was supposed to get seats from a friend of mine in Denver, but when I came back from my deployment, it was all this COVID stuff, which I guess really it still is, and I just, I put them in the other places. I, I didn't buy them, so. Still looking to get some lightweight seats. Something's gonna hug me a little bit better. Obviously, most for the, the biggest deal is to shave weight. Trying to get this car down to like 2,900 ish, 2,950 would be nice. That means me and the car, the car would be still under 3,100. So, it'd be nice. But a uh, you know, lightweight battery really helped too. That was another 20 pounds. Uh, the Willwood brakes, six pots. Uh, they sh we were like 42 pounds. So I got the two piece discs. I got, um, what is it, Carbotech AX6 pads up front. We got the ECS two piece rotors in the rear with I Sweep 2000 series pads. And of course, we got the stud conversion from Racing Line. Um, they don't really hold up to taking them on and off. All in. Like they're pretty worn already. I haven't had them for that long, but they, they still look nice from the side. Um, BC Racing suspension with a whole bunch of 034 bits. Got the Audi aluminum subframe, um, 034 sway bar in the back and their adjustable end links and I think it's the super pro or no they're, they're white line uh, control arms in the front that I caster and camber and then in the rear we got uh, super pro trailing arms uh, 034 dead set kit for the subframe and their um, strut mounts whole bunch of 034 stuff and they're holding up great um, so yeah, they're adjustable end links in the rear. What else? I'll link my whole build down below. We got all types of stuff in the shifter department from Black Forest Industries and Diesel Geek. Um, we're using the, the Brisk 9 Series racing plugs. They're holding up great. I've been checking gap on them every thousand-ish miles just because I've been traveling a lot and beating the hell out of the car. And uh, they look great. They look awesome. Actually, I need to check my plugs again before our trip next weekend here soon I don't know if it's gonna be it'll probably be about the same time I'll probably do all the carbon fiber stuff either right before or go to the dyno right after on and, and see what it is on 91 then I'll go back on 85 and uh, we'll make that 500 mark we're, we're definitely making that this summer um, yeah I'm just trying to get the car with the weight out of the car I need better seating hold me in the seat the car's doing great, 77,000 miles. And it'll be a lot higher because we got a lot of trips still. I'm going to, I'll be in San Diego in uh, September for Big SoCal Euro. Who knows what else, streetcar takeover events and drag events and all the autocross stuff. Busy year, busy, busy year. Just hopefully none of this shit gets canceled from COVID because this is my life now and I, I need this shit. If I ain't racing, I'm not happy. <laughs> I don't like being stuck in the house all weekend, playing video games and watching Netflix. I need to be out doing something, seeing my friends, doing race car shit. But, uh, that's about all I got. 
just want to have a little chat. If there's anything you guys want to see on the channel, go out. I'm going to make another draggy video here soon uh, once we get the E85 in. Um, I don't know. What do you guys want to see? I don't really have any small parts to buy right now. Just to throw on, saving up to get all this carbon fiber and do the E85 tuning. And of course, all the racing and traveling, that's taking a lot of my money too, so it's making it a little hard. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys like this video. Just me rambling on, drinking beer on a Thursday afternoon. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys have a great July 4th. And I'll uh, catch you on the flip flop.